Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to talk about training parameters in the Ultralytics Hub and how we can integrate custom ones. So when we're using the Ultralytics Hub, we don't need to write any code at all. It's just a few clicks and we can set up a whole computer vision training pipeline, take a data set, choose a model, we specify the training parameters, and then we're good to go. We can train our model on the Ultralytics Cloud tool, bring your own agent or in a Google Colab notebook. So let's just jump straight into the Ultralytics Hub. We already have videos covering pretty much all of it, both data set, projects, models, different types of integrations and so on. So we have the whole computer vision pipeline. But basically we can just go inside a data set, find one that we want to take a look at. Right now let's just go for this wildlife, which is an object detection data set, but you can also have like post estimation, classification, instant segmentation and so on. Here we just have a bunch of images. Let's now go in and train a model. So you need to have your images annotated already. You can see some images, overview over your data set with your class distribution. But let's now go up and hit train model. So now we'll get this view. We can set up a project, specify a model name and so on. We can go with an official one or also a custom model if you have trained like a previous one or also just bring your own. So we can also go in and start training from one of the previous models that we have used could be on a smaller data set, some initial models that were tested out and we want to resume the training or just train on a large data set or new data added to our data set. So you can also do that, but right now it's going to take a look at the architectures and choose one of them. So we both have the ULV8 architecture and ULV5 with all the different variations. So nano, small, medium, large and extra large. We can see a high level overview over the accuracy and the inference speed. So this is pretty cool. But if we have this advanced model configuration, we can expand it and see all of these different types of parameters that we can set for our training. So these are all the training parameters where we can specify how long we want to train for different types of parameters that will affect the neural network while it's training. So right now, the first one is we can choose if you want to use a pre-trained model or not. In most cases, you want to use a pre-trained model. So it's basically just a model that have already been trained on a large scale data set. So we're using the Coco data set pre-train the model on that, and then we fine tune that model on our own custom data set. And by doing that, we only need a few hundred images to be able to do instant segmentation, update detection, classification, and so on. Then we have the number epoch. It's basically just how many iterations do we want to train our neural network for. So after every single epoch, we actually go in and do a validation run. Inside of each epoch, we can also have a batch. So we can have a number of images. We throw those images into our batch. Then we throw on batch, through the model, we optimize our weights based on an optimizer and also a learning rate. So we make some small modifications to our network after every batch. Then we take every single batch, throw it through the model, and then we have an iteration or what we call an epoch. So here you can specify how many epochs. Usually I just go with 30 or 50 to start out with. You can always scale it or resume the training after that. You'll get a warning here if you change any of the default settings because in most cases it is the best to just go with the default settings, see how that works before you do some tuning. So you really need to dive into what the parameters do, but it's also good to learn and also tune some of the parameters, see how does it affect my model while I'm training and so on. You will learn a ton from that and you'll just get way more experience over time to set these parameters because sometimes it is basically just seeing what the weather is like and then just choosing some of the parameters based on experiences and how it normally affects the models. We can also specify the image size. So this is the default one, but you can specify like an arbitrary image size. So it could also be like 1280. I should go with the default one. We can specify the patient here. So it's basically just like how many epochs to keep training after early stopping. So we can set early stopping. If a model is not improving on our validation set, then after a number of epochs, we can actually just stop the training. It can reduce the cost and so on if we're training on GPUs. Because again, if a model is not really performing better, if we don't get higher validation accuracy, it doesn't really make sense to train our model for longer and it has kind of converged. So if you want to cache the data set on the RAM, the disk, or just none here, it could be used for like faster loading. So if you're caching on the RAM with our data set, like it will load it faster and so on. It will also depend on your GPU size for your batches and everything and also just the data set in total. But again, it doesn't really matter too much. You can just go with none if you're just starting out or you don't really know like what specifically you need. 
Then we can choose the device to run on and also the batch size here at the end. So the device, if you have a GPU available, you can choose GPU. MPS is for MacBooks, so they have like a framework that where you can use the Apple hardware and so on to accelerate the training a bit. And also the CPU here at the end, if you don't have any other hardware accelerators available on your computer. So the CPU will take significantly longer. MPS is not too fast either, but the GPU will be the best in most cases. And you can even train like YOLO V8 models, 30, 40 epochs on several hundred images in no time. So probably like 10, 20 minutes and you have a custom model up and running. The last one here is the bass size. So you can choose like auto if it just needs to like auto detect it based on your GPU RAM because you need to take the RAM of your GPU into account. You can't really have two large bat sizes because then it's going to overflow the GPU RAM and it will just crash it. So we need to have a perfect bat size for our RAM. Um, and basically also just for our models. So we don't want it to be too low, but we don't want it to be too high either. So we can just specify this auto, or you can specify your own custom batch size. So it could be like eight, depending on your GPU RAM. It also depends on your image size. But again, 16, 32, and so on is usually pretty good values. Um, but let's just go with the auto one. The last thing here that I want to show you guys is the custom commands. So we can go in and add every single training parameter that you can tune and also choose from the Autolytics framework. And these are all the parameters that we normally tune, have different values for different models, different optimizers and so on. We can set all of that in here. So you can even have multiple devices and so on. If you have multiple GPUs connected to your computer, the number of workers for your data set and so on. Optimizer, you can choose the specific optimizer. We can just take a look at that. So right now it's just automatically finding the best optimizer. And in most cases, like we're using Atom V, um, we have SGD, Atom, they're pretty much just different variations of them, but it is our optimizer, which is choosing how much we need to optimize and fine tune our weight after processing every single batch passed through the neural network. So yeah, let's just go with the auto one. But again, we can choose any of the optimizers here. And these are like the most used and common ones. We can also take a look at some of the other ones. Seed, if we want to have our model training being deterministic. Could be if you're training from scratch, we want to have initial weight, which act like deterministic. So we can keep on reproducing our results and so on. So we basically just get rid of some random stuff. We can also set some parameter here for deterministic. All of these arguments, all of these training parameters, they can be found inside the Autolytics documentation and they can also be looked up on the internet and so on. These are widely used and pretty well explained. We also have some freeze if you want to freeze like layers and so on when we're tuning a model, momentum for our optimizer. So we can choose if you want to use momentum and also how much. We have some weight decay, number of epochs that we want to do warm up for when we're choosing our learning rate. So sometimes we actually like need to warm up our model and our learning rate before we actually like start to learn with a model. Specify the momentum, box, the class here. So these are the laws and so on. We can just take a look at it. So these are basically just parameters that you can set. All of these values will be automatically set. We have default values for every single one of them if you're just hitting train to start with. So ideally, you can just take your data set, connect to it, choose a model, train it. You can export and use it in your own applications and projects. But we have values and arguments for all of these ones in here. So we also have learning rate zero and learning rate final. So normally you'll start with one learning rate and then you'll basically just have a weight decay or like some kind of like learning rate decay. So it decays over time because in the start we want to have our model learn more. And then over time when our model starts to converge, when we are learning our data, we want it to be less and less. So the higher learning rate we have, the larger steps we take when we are optimizing our weights, basically just make making small modifications to the values inside of our neural network. So these are pretty much just all the training parameters that we can set. Just go with the default ones. You can set them up. We can hit continue and then we're training a model. Then we can choose between the Autolytics Cloud, Google Colab, or we can bring your own agent. 30 epochs, choose the available instance. We're now using a GPU. Use the Autolytics Hub account. Start the training, it's going to set up the instance. We have videos for all of this here, also how you can read the charge, get a preview of the model so you can test it out, deploy it either on the Logilytics hub or in your own custom applications and projects. You can export the models, so this is pretty cool. Thanks a lot for watching this video here, guys. I hope you all learned a ton. Definitely go in and learn about the parameters. You will learn a ton from that. And also when you're training neural networks, computer vision models, and also just 
AI deep learning models in general, you need to know these training parameters and how you can integrate them into the Autolytics hub. So definitely go ahead and test it out, check it out, and then I'll just see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.